Welcome to the workshop. Hi, today I'm going to be cutting a beveled splice joint. We'll be connecting two components of equal uh, dimensions in their length by cutting a stepped angle or stepped bevel at the end of each one. So this is the material we're removing. Those two get glued together. The steps at each end of the joint provide good mechanical strength to stop the components compressing together. As you can probably see, these components are still slightly rough, so I need to plane those nice and square and true all round to the same cross-sectional dimensions and then we can start the joint. So, so I'm all set up now with my components nicely squared, squared off on the end, same thickness, same width. I must apologise, I started to mark out thinking I was recording, but I wasn't. So I'll start again. I've set my marking gauge to approximately a sixth of the width of the material. I've marked a line from the face side on both components. And that will be the width of our step. Then I've adjusted the width of the marking gauge to approximately 5 6 of the width. Again, marked from the face side, top and bottom of each component. And that's for the step on the other side. Then taking my bevel gauge which I've set in this instance to a 1 in 3 slope. The shallower the slope, the greater the um, glue surface area you have and the greater the bond will be. But obviously the greater the slope, the more material you end up losing in the overlap. So just for this demonstration I'm doing 1 in 3. Set the bevel gauge on the end of the step mark pencil and I've scribed that line as well so knife that line just up to where the other step where we mark with the marking gauge the other width of the step move the bevel gauge across keep it in the same orientation to the other component line it up with the step opposite to the face side and mark a knife align to the opposing step now flip everything over including the bevel gauge and then we want to connect from the step again on the face side because the face side is this side now so from the bottom step on that component from the one step to the other step slide the bevel gauge down to the opposite component align it with this step here opposite the face edge this time mark it and knife it and take the engineers tri square and we need to mark round for where the steps are and the steps are where our bevel line reaches our step line and that intersects there so we want to knife that to the edge of the component now we need to transfer those lines around 
the step. And now we're ready to start sawing. With the workpiece clamped in your vise and the bevel line perpendicular to the bench, we can now cut down the bevel line and remove the little wedge. Now we need to smooth that surface either with chisel or a router plane bring it down to our knife line and nice and flat. You can do that with the bench vise. If you snug up a little bit so you can still move the piece, find a chisel, fit it in your knife line and just adjust the piece so it's level with the jaw of the, of the vise. Clamp the vise down and then gradually pair across that surface with plenty of pressure down on the jaw of the vise so you keep the, the chisel level right the way across. Alternatively with a router plane and two nice, nicely planed up flat and square all round equal thickness skis you can set your router plane to cut this and clean up both bevels on both of our components and then we should be able to test fit them We uh, need to finish off with a chisel on our knife line just to square that up nicely. So feed the chisel onto the knife line and straight down. and just clean up into the corner there and that's going together nice and tightly now so we can glue it together clamping of this joint can be quite awkward first of all you want to clamp two blocks either side of the joint on each component. That provides you a clamping end here and here to pull the joint together in its length. So let me try and demonstrate this to you. Keep the components on a level surface, pull them together, ideally putting some packing material on both sides. But as we tighten this clamp up, the wedges, the bevel surfaces, especially now that they've got glue on, will try to push the components apart. So we need to counteract that by clamping in this direction on the blocks that we've installed like so. A little bit of light pressure on one side and on the other side pull the, the stepped ends tightly together then tighten up on the faces 
the ends again and the faces again. I can leave these clamps on whilst I put glue on the joint surfaces. Okay. And what we don't want to do is stick it to what we're working on below. So I suggest that we insert a piece of glossy paper underneath there. Align it up. Apply a small amount of pressure across the faces. That'll do. And then try and pull the ends in together. So a light amount of pressure there as well. Make sure both components are nice and aligned with the surface underneath. Apply a little bit of pressure to the face. And I've missed out my a clamping block there. Face protection block. So let's quickly slip that in. Apply a bit of pressure, increase pressure on the outside, pull the components together, check the alignment, feels good, nice and solid on the level surface below. Tighten the face a bit more. Tighten up on the outside and tighten up on the face again, but not so much that you're squeezing all the glue out of the joint. Good. Now I can flip that over. and I can put a further clamp just across this side of the joint just so that we've got good pressure right the way across Good, it's staying together, always a good start. I'll just clean off the glue squeeze out, run the plane over the edges just to clean it up a bit and show you the finished result. And there we have it, the beveled splice. Give it a go.